Valve. We really, really enjoyed. Thank and you. Particularly the explanation from Dr. Sondergaard was really systematic. We yeah. appreciate that. Maybe, Tej, before you start, one quick word on yesterday's cases. Any complications or everyone did okay? Maybe Extremely detailed round has been taken. Uh, there is no problem. And Samir specially came to, to uh, see the patient where he deployed Vasoband. And I think Samir can comment. Samir. And all other patients, including Dr. Saito's patient, they are doing fine. And uh, they will be ready for discharge today. All of them. All eight patients. Just, just great to hear. Yes, yeah, Samir, how was the, the Vasoband? We're all very keen to know if that worked. So yesterday's Vasoband case, uh, I just went this morning to do an ultrasound on the lady. And the artery is widely patent. And you'd be surprised. It was a 1.5 millimeter vessel that we had put a six French sheath in. And uh, with the vasoband, it was widely patent. I have ultrasound on my phone that I recorded, uh, and the reverse barbo test came out perfect. That's right. I mean, that's a, that's a randomized trial because her right side was occluded, and now the left side is patent. I think you proved it. We can see the slide, uh, Tejas. Maybe we can hear the history next. Yes, yeah, so we're super excited to see another exciting case from Professor Saito. And uh, did we hear the history, Sanjay? Someone's going to tell us the history. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, if somebody could just talk about the case. Huh. The slide is up. S slide is not. They will be delivered from there. Okay. Deli they will be delivering from there. Yes. It is not seen here. So it seems to be um, a lady with a poor LV function, um, significant angina, multiple cardiovascular risk factors, including diabetes, a multivessel CAD with an osteo left main, 80% mid circumflex, and RCA 80%. So it seems that. You have a, an EBU catheter uh, searching for the left main for the left main now, and um, and the plan is to to treat the the left main and the circumflex and do um, an endoluminal reconstruction of the RCA. Good morning, professors. It's uh, Sanjo Kaura. Thanks for the privilege here, of being run through, here. Run through. Um, I'm looking at your diagnostic films as well as your initial film here with an EBU guide well engaged. There isn't much in the way of pressure dampening, and I don't see a ton of stenosis at the ostium of the left main. Do you think there's a role to use intervascular imaging up front to try to define whether or not that angiographic stenosis that we see in some of the views is actually tight enough to justify PCI? We have pretty good cutoffs on IVIS, for example, for the osteo left main. Oh, yes. Dr. Saito, you're on. Ah, okay. <coughs> so, for this particular case, uh, there is two, two tight regions. <coughs> one is in LAD, and the second one is in the circumflex. The circumflex looks not so big, but the LAD looks very large for this patient. So, of course, the main target is uh, LAD. And also, there is some osteal LAD narrowing extending to the left main. So, we have to consider about the treatment for the left main as well. So, there was a suggestion of doing an upfront imaging like an IVUS or something to assess the lesions. Mm -hmm. So, any plans of doing that? Yes, I think so. So, Sanjog, while, while they're uh, Can I have a cranial, working, cranial. maybe um, you could Epicranial. tell us what you think about IVUS of the ostium and how you get coaxial, any risk of getting the area wrong if your IVUS is Shall we take a well, picture? Thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you bring up a very important point, right, which comes down to guide positioning. The, the angiogram we know does not assess the left main particularly well because of the angulation of the vessel in respect to the aorta, which is why the the uh, general practice now advocates the use of intervascular imaging, particularly IVIS has tons of evidence behind it now in that, in that scenario. 
but the key is that your guide catheter actually has to be coaxial, and it's not particularly good for length when, you're, yeah. when you've got true coaxiality, because the guide catheter by definition is going to go back and forth with each beat of the heart. So really, when you're looking at length, you need stability of your system, but you're going to lose your, uh, your cross-sectionality right at the ostium. That doesn't necessarily apply, though, within the mid-shaft of the left mean or in the mid-shaft yeah, of the other vasculature because it's not as susceptible to, to oblique <coughs> cutting given that aortic, mm. aortic angles are different in different patients, and that's why the ostium is a specific area there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great explanation, and I, just as a lesson, uh, if things don't <laughs> fit, if it angiographically looks tight, but you're not getting an area on IVUS that fits, just to think about whether you maybe weren't coaxial. Mm, I okay. think th these things are all about the company that they keep as well, right? So you've got a patient who's got an EF of 25% with multi-vessel <laughs> disease in the branch vessel. That's a, that's a good reason to have a poor EF, okay. right? Can they and then on top of that, you don't have a ton of pressure dampening at the level of the left main, right? You have good blowback of the contrast back into the aortic root. You have easy engagement of a deeply intubated guide catheter. Yeah. So oh. it all sort of walks oh, okay. and talks like someone who doesn't necessarily have an osteoleft mean, though the point that was made earlier, which is that there's yes. proximal LAD disease that comes Thank back you. into the left main is certainly well taken. And so my approach to this type of a case after getting wire access to all of the major vasculature would probably be to create flow, because there's no doubt that the LAD is tight, but then do an imaging run to figure out not only what my stent strategy is going to be from the perspective of plaque preparation, plaque type, proximal and distal landing zones, but whether or not there is a place to land or whether or not there isn't within Shall the LAD. Shall we take a picture? Okay. 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 Uh, and there was also, uh, there's also an interesting comment that was made earlier by, by Professor Saito about the size of the circumflex. And I think that the, the point's well taken in that, you know, in that circumflexes can certainly be variable in size depending on how big the RCA is. The challenge here is that you have some underfilling distally, right? So I wonder if once you open up that vessel, give some nitrates, and then Ivis said you'll see an EEL to EEL diameter distally of three, three and a half millimeters within that OM. Fantastic points, and the nitrates also for the left main origin to make sure there's no Absolutely. spasm there. Um, Dr. Saito, your strategy now, are you uh, t going to wire the other vessel? Yes, uh, I'm trying to put the wire into circumflex, but uh, the angle looks quite acute for this circumflex. So, and Professor, what's the wire that you're using? This is Sion, Sion. But looking at the angiogram, you show that I think the, 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 the flow in the circumflex is now a little bit worse. Yeah. And I think we don't. Uh, there was a there were there were more branches that are now that have now disappeared. The flow in the circumflex hmm. is now TME two, and it was TME three at the time of the diagnostic angiogram. Mm -hmm. And so, for the operators that are actually observing the use of the wire and the professor's hands as he wires the lesion. The, the Xion wire has an Act 1 core, right? So it's a central wire with eight wires that are wrapped around the core that allow you to cheat the physics of one-to-one -one torque control. If you, if you really want one-to-one -one torque control, you need a thick core wire, which allows you to turn once at the back and get one turn at the front. But what you lose then is your trackability, your ability for the wire to bend around, around tortuous anatomy. The eight, the eight wires around a core wire within Can the Xi'an wire picture? allow you okay. to slowly advance with your front fingers, and then it is true, true one-to-one -one torque control. So uh. here we have a situation where the tip of the wire is within the lesion, and it's difficult to tell whether that's, that's wall or mm. whether that's actually just because the lesion is so tight that you're occluding flow. And this is one of the situations where mm. perhaps the use of a, an Act 1 yeah. core wire like a Xi'an Black, which has a polymer jacket, might be helpful because the issue here seems to be that the lesion is very tight. Or maybe you could take a microcatheter to support this. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. yes absolutely. that's absolutely. a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Can good. I have a I, microcatheter? I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if a microcatheter is here. Uh, uh, it's not force you need in this case, it's yeah. just uh, elegance. So uh, the, the issue of the microcatheter micro here is that's have a micro catheter? that'll stiffen the tip, right? So what's yeah. the, the well, question what we have saying. to ask is what's the problem we're trying to solve? Is yes. the problem that we're trying to solve that the wire tip 
or the tip strength isn't high enough to get through the lesion. To me, that's not the problem here. The problem here is that the lesion is tight and you don't have a coated uh, tip on the Xi'an wire. Instead, okay. with the Xi'an black, you have a polymer jacket. Yeah, it's a one-to-one -to -one torque fast. control wire, and so huh. you can finesse that through, which is why I, that would be my choice yeah. here. Yeah, I, I exactly would do the same thing. I fully agree. Okay. 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 I think that the beauty of coronary intervention, actually, for, for the operators as we, as we wade in from more simple to more complex cases is continuously asking yourself the question, uh. what is the problem you're trying to solve? Right? Is yeah. it, there's, there's too many times where we run into these procedures where we try one thing, then it doesn't work, then we try another thing and it doesn't work, then we try another thing and it doesn't work. When in reality, you could probably look at the lesions in the first place, ask yourself that question, and then make more targeted toolbox choices by collecting more information and then using that information to optimize your decision making, right? In the end, it comes in trusting your fingers and what your fingers <laughs> are telling you. So I'm wondering what the fingers of Dr. Saito mm -hmm. are feeling at this moment. We, we all look, but it's different when you touch. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the, the Xi'an wire, I mean, I, I do a lot of CTO-PCI in, in, in my practice, and so the Xi'an wire is my preferred wire to wire things like dissection planes because there's a visual tactile piece there, right? That wire will bend and will give you visual feedback the moment it's hitting any, any sort of tissue. Absolutely. As a result, it becomes a very, very fine palpation instrument where it's it's... It's less about physical feel, it's more about what your brain will interpret the wire behavior uh, to tell you. I think in this situation, we're, we're getting the Xi'an tip right into the lesion, mm -hmm. and then oh, it stops oh. moving, oh. right? So that tells you a lot. Everyone has their favorite workhorse wire. What's yours? Well, I, workhorse high, uh, wires that I use it. now is the BMW More and uh, sometimes Sion. But uh, you know, you, I don't have a workhorse wire because I end up doing the <laughs> complex procedure. So it's very procedure dependent. But in my cen center is uh, I'll easily start every procedure with a wire I'm familiar with because it gives you what I was saying before the tactility of uh, and you, you, you feel that lesion you have a feeling of it and the discussions you have to do is uh, you need to see if there is uh, if it's a CTO it's another style if it's a very calcifi calcified lesion it's another style if there is a tight lesion it's another thing uh, if there is tortuosity before or in the lesion itself it's also another wire so these are all factors you need to consider when you choose the wire I think those are extremely helpful comments this comes down to the yeah. task-based um, classification of wires right what is it that you're asking your tool to do? I mean, we have so many sophisticated tools in PCI. I actually don't think that you need that much technical skill when you know how to apply the right tool to the right problem. No, right? it's so complicated. Absolutely. Uh. Right, so, I mean, my workhorse wire of choice on a personal level is actually a Xi'an Blue because it's I mean, very much the same Act 1 core. The tip strength is ever so slightly less than a regular Xi'an. Um, but it's got a hydrophilic, not a polymer jacketed, but a hydrophilic tip, which helps with, you know, trackability as well as crossing some of these tight mm -hmm. lesions. Though, once again, here, my, mm -hmm. my wire of choice would be a black. And if that failed, I'd go to a Pilot 200. Fazila, what do you think? What is yours? Well, mine's Xion Blue as well. And for do those who are starting intervention, that's a workhorse of wire is something that would do your job in the vast majority of cases. Agreed. Right? So uh, we see that Professor Saito has taken a fine cross microcatheter. And the advantage of taking a microcatheter is that it's it okay. allows you flexibility to change your wires or to get your wire out, change its tip and all. So, I mean, here, 
uh, as the point has been well taken that we might need to change mm -hmm. to a more polymer mm -hmm. jacketed wire or something. So if you have a fine cross in position, you can obviously change your wires, change the tip of your wires and all. It gives you more flexibility and maneuverability as well as it gives you an extra support to your workhorse wire also to take that tight lesion easily. I mean, that's my take on using a microcatheter for difficult lesions. So we saw the pilot, thank you, uh, um, Professor Malik, that was, that, those are really good points. I think the microcatheter piece to be able to give yourself a base of operations to change your approaches is exceptionally important and engenders the need for other skills like trapping or hydroplaning, which are kind of fundamental skills that I think anybody who's starting or starting to embark on complex cases should become quite familiar with. Okay. The, um, the wire we saw a picture of a moment ago was a Pilot 50. Does anybody have any comments on that wire as a choice? Okay. Well, that would be only when you wanted to cross a CTO that you were on, because a Pilot 50 would never ever be anyone's workhorse wire, point Agreed. number one. And a Pilot 50 has <coughs> a mind of its own, and if you do not know how to control it, it will go into, you know, subintimal flaps and really cause you more uh, tears than anything else. So, I mean, respect your Pilot 50, that's what I say. Yeah. So, uh, Professor Sato, any comments on uh, what you're doing right now? Okay, uh, I exchanged the wire to Pilot 50 because uh, the region itself is quite tight and very uh, with complex anatomy. So, the I understood the, this region needs some hydrophic wire. But uh, the, this wire is always tending to go to the uh, some uh, uh, subintimal space. So I have to be very careful. And so I think that the challenge with polymer jackets is, as uh, many of us will know is that you lose your tactile feedback, right? So yes, what, you get, what you get from lubricity and the ability to sneak through tight lesions, uh, for that you get, there's no free lunch, right? So for that you give up the tactile feedback, you give up your ability to feel. Okay, so which is why uh, yes. Professor Saito makes such an important point, which is that you can very yes, easily very get into subintimal planes. So that here we but, see that. Uh, still, even now, I feel very strong resistance. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether the wire is in the subintimal space or in the true room. Uh, like if you get a condition where you have a osteal left main uh, narrowing and uh, as in this case you have seen that in the check angiogram it has shown osteal narrowing but in the actual like with the help of the diagnostic catheter you don't see any pressure damping. Now say for example if you do an IVUS in an osteal left main without having any atherosclerotic plaque at the region of the osteum but the distal part of the left main is normal, but the osteum of the left main is narrow. Still, I feel without having any strong external resistance. compression. So shall we take on? So do you stand that uh, that part of the left main, or without having any atherosclerotic plaque? It's true, Lehman, sir. But the osteum mm. of the left curvature? main is narrow. Curvature is no giving resistance, I suppose. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, just to clarify, are you asking? Do you stent a vessel with no disease? where it looks like the left main is narrow. So okay. that's the whole point picture. of intervascular imaging, right? Because the, the angiogram just doesn't capture the left main particularly well, right? Okay. And this and looks those wonderful. I think this is in the true, yeah. So, so we see that the, the lesion's I been push crossed. this micro catheter, but impossible. Yeah, so we fun. need a very small size of the it balloon. It a little bit. Uh, hmm? What? So it just went size little of little what's your strategy for non-crossable uh, no, yes. with a fine no. cross? No, I don't think so. Dr. Sato, they want to know what your strategy is with it the fine cross. It has gone across the region. I, I tried to cross uh, fine cross through the region, but I feel very strong resi resistance. So the, I have to pull back. So do you have an algorithm, Professor Saito, for hmm? 
your wire across but your gear won't go? It's a pretty familiar CTO scenario that we all uh, run into. I think, uh, anyway, I need a very nice... Do you have a small size balloon? Yes. Which one? Uh, one 1.25 or yes. 1. Okay. 1.25. Okay. To other members and, uh, of the panel while, uh, I while Dr. Uh, says works. Okay. Does anybody have so a, uh, an algorithm yeah. that they that they want to share on wireless? Two point five meter There are three steps you could 1. do. 1.25 open. Two point five. And uh, depends on how much money you want to spend and the situation you are. And uh, if you want to have a very simple solution, you could. Always find a branch where you could anchor, especially in the okay. situation you are with uh, yeah. two wires. For two point five balloon for balloon trapping. Yeah. Uh, yes. If you are yes. working on one lesion, you could uh, either find a side yeah. branch, yeah. or sometimes if the problem is hmm. of uh, anchoring, uh, the anchoring could help you uh, navigate the tortuosities. There is other solutions for that, and that is the guideliner, or all the. Uh, let's say the new versions of the guideliner and uh, the same thing is also handy to know these techniques in um, sometimes in complex procedures then the anchoring at the same lesion is difficult because that lesion is what you need to cross so you need to either anchor in another branch of the let's say in an LED you could anchor yourself on a septal is a very safe place to to anchor and that is a technique you use in CTO sometimes for uh, advancing the, let's say, the contralateral. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you asked for a 125 balloon or a 2.5 because the one that uh, they just gave it's you is a 2.5 balloon. Uh, you can see balloon? Oh, no, no, it cropping. has not come. Oh, sir. that's for mm -hmm. cropping. Okay. Not yet. That being not said, Ryuri balloons are magical balloons. We don't have no, access to those not. in North America. I think in the U.S. they have Takeros. Yes. But the Ryuris okay. are particularly well okay. constructed. Okay. They're very yeah. strong yeah. balloons and they have a slip yeah. coating on the outside. They have uh, the same sort of hydrophilic coating that the sheaths do. And so these balloons are, it's very impressive where they will go. <coughs> I think the 1.5 uh, Ryuri or Takeru balloon is a, is a staple workhorse as part of any, I think, CTO toolbox okay. where you can access that. But going after that, uh, Rob Riley, myself, and a few others wrote a paper a couple of years ago that was, that was called The Algorithms Within the Algorithm, where we discussed okay. these types of problems. So algorithms set up to, s to solve, uh, you know, wire across gear won't go in these types of problems that you encounter in CTO PCI. So, and so I think you, the way we divided okay. that okay. up was three fundamental areas. One is ways to increase support. Second is ways to modify the lesion. Third is ways to obliterate the lesion. So if you're going to increase support, you heard the anchor balloon, which here might work very well if you were to put an anchor balloon in the LED lesion and then see if you can push a microcatheter across. You heard about guideliner, which with a query osteal left main lesion may not be the optimal choice, but you can always assess that, make sure it's not there, and, and then address. You can talk a little bit about putting anchor wires into other places oh, within, gross. within yes. the coronary tree. Yeah. Uh, so and then, of so course, there are small balloons, uh, then grenade capacity. Then in North America, we've got laser for those situations, yeah, a whole exactly. one uh, with uh, rotablation, uh, or okay. finally the external cap crush where you dissect around the lesion so balloon on the subintimal mm. wire, cross the calcium, 10, and then cross on the in intraluminal wire. 14, absolutely. 14. Okay, deflate. Now, which was the balloon okay. that you used to cross that, that tight lesion? Oh, was yes. that a, a Rayuri 125 or 15 or? Still not. I probably proximal part is occluding. Okay. Okay, here. Okay. Mm. Twelve. Ten, twelve. Okay. Okay. Mm. What's the balloon that you used? One, one to five. Now it's seen. Uh, okay. Uh, more. Okay, more. Yeah. Fifteen. Okay. 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 And so, in this lady with an EF of twenty-five percent, a question to the panel: Would anybody dilate the LAD and re-establish flow before going after the circ? Well, it seems that in this case, uh, I, I agree with your. Uh, I agree with that, but um, I think okay. in this case okay. that they overcommitted to yes. wire that. Yeah. That circumflex, and once they commit it, then okay. I see the difficulty Perfect. now. <coughs> work good with the circumflex. I think that the, may yes. grow in so 
my thinking I, there is... I want to fix this region by putting the dual coating balloon, no? Oh, <coughs> you have coating balloon? two millimeter DCB. Yeah, mm. that's what I was going to suggest. Mm. It's a good mm. region for DCB. Sure. Mm. DCB. And once again, if you're, anyway. if, if you're likely to open an imaging uh, catheter for the LED, stand. We have two why not stand. use the imaging two catheter stand? here as well? <laughs> right? Up to It'll you. give you an idea if you've got a, so a we big don't dissection have within ah, okay, the okay. So two millimeter stand, yes. please. Yeah. Uh, they don't have DCB. Okay, so no, but uh, let's have that discussion anyway. Uh, so two by how I, much? I hear uh, uh, two Dr. by asking for a DCB, and it could be a very viable way to do it. You see that they, uh, if you see that the <coughs> guiding, I didn't realize was it a six or a seven French guiding, Doctor Saito, you have. Hmm. That looks like a seven. I think it's orange at the hub. Yeah. Okay. So if you look to that lesion, so uh, you know a seven French guiding, you could. Uh, think it's a 2.2 millimeters about so 2.3 maybe max and uh, uh, you see that that lesion that vessel is smaller than the guiding at least here on angiography calculate the fact that the circumflex is a bit further than so the guiding so you could okay. underestimate okay. it but still remains a small lesion and that's what could be a good reason I don't see it's a small not a long lesion short lesion calcified you could also think of uh, doing a DCB in that lesion. So I guess the challenge that I have with that is that if you look at the osteum of the circuit, it almost looks like it cones out. And so my question is, how do we know that that's not diffuse disease? And if it is diffuse disease, do we DCB it across the lesion or do we carpet bomb the circ with a long stent that then you can take up to an EEL to EEL size that actually approximates the true size of the vessel? I think that's where we all seem to be struggling, right? Looks good. Uh, yeah. We've got okay. Professor Akasaka here, and we really need to do some imaging, right? So once yeah. we do imaging, Twelve. lots of questions will be I think, answered. I think that's yeah. uh, well, well, Professor Malik's well. point is very well taken. Yeah, right? so why guess? Okay. 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 Why guess when you can get the imaging and get the result that that's tailored to that vessel? Okay. Particularly when you're okay. going to have to pull the imaging out for the left main in the LAD. Nice. Yeah. Super. Hmm. So shall we go so to the LAD? They stented the tightest part. Should I do? Mm -hmm. Well, this looks great to us, uh, um, Dr. Saito. Is the plan next to do the LAD? Okay. Uh, can I have a micro catheter? I okay. want to exchange this. Micro catheter? Yeah. Micro catheter. We discuss at this point. It's when you are mm. putting a stand that you <coughs> think that it's a bit larger than the vessel you are using. And then we have a I CO always try to already. At least uh, when I employ it, not use a CO lot of right atmospheres. Right and uh, go with under under nomination uh, under nominated values so for example if i'm putting if i don't have anything else and i need to put a two and a half in a 2.0 lesion uh, then i go with uh, let's say six to eight atmospheres max that it the distal edge does not cause a dissection i although this is not recommended i still go okay. two millimeters okay. up and uh, and i go the higher inflation at that point because you have a chance of dissecting the edge proximal, but uh, doing okay. high atmospheres at so uh, on, so immediately could dissect both edges. And uh, especially when you're dealing with a small vessel, you don't want the distal edge dissection because it will add stent in a very tight part of lesion where you sometimes are very limited in what you can bring. So I, I am now exchanging the wire by using the micro catheter. Because uh, Pilot 50 is, looks dangerous. Okay, this is Xion. You balloon? You want to balloon trap, no? No, just only push by. Okay. Okay. Keep like 12. 12, 12. Wait, really, it's looking. Oh. Oh, no, no. So maybe trapping, trapping. Ah, trapping. Trapping. Hello, balloon up 2.5. Mm. 2.5. Mm. Mm. No, it, 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 inflation device is corrupt, not the mm. wire is corrupt. Mm. This wire is spoiled actually. Mm. 
there was a problem. Ah, broke, huh? Ah. No, it, it came actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> that must be reason that was not working. Mm -hmm. Negative. Negative up there. Yes, no, 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 back, 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 Then I think uh, we need uh, some predilection. Okay. So we have uh, two two point five millimeter balloon. Two point yes, mm. same balloon. Yes, mm. fine, fine. Two LED. Okay, sir. <coughs> okay. Uh, this is the sock. Uh, what Professor I Saito, I'm what is your crossover. plan for okay. the LED? They don't overlap. Okay, 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 okay. Pardon? What is your plan for the LED? LED. Uh, anyway, first I want to dilate by using two point five millimeter balloon. So. Can I go to cranial? Now, I don't recall if there were any big important diagonal branches coming off around uh, across the LED lesion. That's any plans I, to wire any of those? That's what I was going to ask. Maybe we could review the... Uh, Let's review the cranial view. Yeah, if we could. Yeah. So... Shall we take a picture now? Yes. Okay. And there was a comment here that the workhorse wire in the LED is quite deep. It looks, like, it looks like the LED actually comes off proximal to the tightest part of the bifurcation, but it's a huge diag. Hmm. Or sorry, the uh, diagonal comes off proximal to the tightest bifurcation, but it's very big. Yeah, but uh, I cannot find any narrowing. In Agreed. The and geographically, yeah. there isn't anything that's yeah. obvious there. I don't know what's happened to this patient in between oh. the coronary angiogram and this angiogram. It, uh, it looks like they're two different uh, angiograms. Yeah. I mean, the circumflex looks different. And the LED, I mean, that calcified, you can see the calcium here. It looks real. Uh, that's, that's why I'm sort of getting after the yeah. idea of doing some imaging here, because I think we're, no, we're, we're going to get a suboptimal result if okay. we're not smart okay. about it's, really it's, it's, that's, that's very uh, uh, no, okay. And then the balloon is having, it's okay. like, uh, these yeah. are two different uh, okay. angiograms. Okay. Hmm. The angiograms belong to two different people. I mean, looking at, at based on the data, when you can Six. see hmm. moderate calcification uh, within the angiogram, all normal. bets are off in terms of how severe it actually is. Right? If you've got a calcification that's visible on an angiogram, 50% of the time it's moderate, 50% yes. of the time okay. it's severe. Here. Right? Yeah, here. And, and once again engenders the idea of imaging it to really define both the calcium length, calcium yeah. bulk width. Look, look at that. That's ah. impressive. Look at that. I mean, that was not the, that's not what you saw in the other yeah. angiogram. So th this, oh, it looks like it just opened okay. up for you. Okay. So, shall we do some imaging? Okay, Absolutely. Sir. Which one? There's just want? a question on imaging. Uh, so, so with that timer yeah. lesion like that, <laughs> and the OCT will also OCT. OCT. Because OCT. 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 Yeah, I think the, the, in this case, I mean, whether it's IVUS or OCT, you'd have to open the lesion before you could image that. Because, yeah. I mean, you're barely able to get a balloon across, right? Yeah, the IVUS will not, the IVUS cap Nothing's going to go. No, nothing's, nothing's going to go. go. But, but I, there's nothing wrong with opening the lesion we'll higher, right? I mean, that, this that's usually my algorithm. Yeah. I mean, I usually open it, so then I, you know, because what you're not doing, uh, you're not doing the imaging to assess the severity of the lesion. Absolutely. You are doing the yeah. imaging to assess yeah. what's the size of the stent you're going to use or whether or not you need additional uh, treatment strategies like that. Uh, atherectomy or, or, or IVL. I think on that note, I mean, you, uh, Mauricio, you bring up probably one of the most important points around imaging, which is that you, outside of the left main, there are no imaging cutoffs to tell us that we should intervene. Exactly. There are imaging cutoffs that tell us we can defer intervention. It's physiology, it's the patient symptoms, it's LV dysfunction that, that drives us towards yeah, and that's very out, or not. Yeah, that's very well outlined in the guidelines. In the new exactly. revascularization guidelines, that's very well outlined. I, I agree with you. However, so, I would like to ask Dr. Yeah. Akasaka, Professor Akasaka here. Um, 
in my opinion, when you have decided to put the stent, it's okay if you uh, do the imaging after, where you think that the imaging will not, uh, imaging catheter, whatever you're using, will not cross. However, the beauty of imaging is to do every step of it up front. So, if I think that it will cross, I would prefer to do it already at the beginning without that we start modifying the lesion. What is your pick on that? Yes, it's a very important question, I think, yes. Uh, if it is difficult to cross the lesion, uh, the OCT custody could not cross, right? I try to do the, the low tabulator or some ablation to get an, uh, some uh, yes, route to get a clear image. So, uh, balloon, if we can dilate 2.0 or 2.5 enough, if we can get an, a good image, Right. Therefore, anyway, we try to uh, do uh, the effort to get an image because uh, it is very important to decide the plan to treat the lesion and uh, the decide the size of the balloon or stent and the rings. It is very important yeah, to identify the morphology and the, the region distribution. So, Dr. Akasaka, can I ask you a question about this patient in particular? Are we going to get an opportunity to use a trick to see the ostium of the left main with OCT, maybe a bumper wire or a guide extension? Um, it would be a really lovely illustration to show um, osteal disease by OCT. Uh, yes. Uh, if you want to uh, try to identify the osteal okay. disease, okay, we sometimes Sorry. use a telescope uh, extension okay. catheter. Uh, because uh, we can identify the osseal region uh, from the, the back flow contrast very well. Uh, but it depends on the size. Uh, Asian people, uh, the left main is not so big, so we can identify. And the other uh, technique is to pass the guide wire huh? through the uh, aorta. It's too and then, late. Uh, uh, you yeah. put the catheter uh, very close to the orifice as possible as you can, and then uh, inject. Uh, contrast, you can identify the uh, left main lesion. And, and maybe uh, for the panel and educate me, your, your area cutoffs, or we, we live in a dichotomous world, so I, I, don't, I don't really like the term cutoff, but when you're comparing OCT left main with IVUS left main, do you have any sort of general principles for what you would consider significant by OCT? Yeah, uh, we are always, uh, yes, uh, try to use uh, the, yes, uh, I, I like to use an uh, extension catheter because it's much quite easy. We never miss uh, to obtain the image. But uh, uh, yes, uh, if I, if you use the guiding uh, wire to the uh, aorta and one, one, wire, yeah, one wire to the aorta and then uh, you try to, yes, uh, put the guiding as a, uh, near uh, orifice, very close to orifice, and then if you try to, yes, inject uh, lots of contrast, sometimes miss to obtain a clear image. But uh, we need some technique, right? Can I ask okay. a question? What's the creatinine of this patient? Uh, and this patient, I'm not sure. Does anybody have the story? Okay. Does this person yeah. have chronic kidney disease? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that it really matters because uh, uh, when you really use OCT the way you, if you need to start using it, you can do one images of OCT and spare other five or six uh, 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 injections when you're working uh, on geographically guided. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm, that's not the point I'm making. The, the point I'm making is that we've now had three runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and so the the. The points that were made about optimizing uh, contrast. Sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Akasaka is going to, to uh, interpret the image now. I have to give the mic to him. Okay. Yeah. One seven. Point seven. Point seven. Right. Here is a uh, distal portion, uh, still there are some disease, right? Uh, <coughs> and this is uh, the, the dilate portion. You can identify the, the fr yeah. dissection, right? Here might be the, uh, <coughs> here is an uh, adventitia, so might be it 
I limited the uh, yes. A big dissection, dissection, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. long dissection yes. on the angiogram. I so thought it was streaming, but are you, yeah. you think it, now it looks like a dissection, right? All yeah, the way yeah, all the way, yes. It's yeah. pretty You're good right. calcium yeah. there, too. Here is the branch, right? And then comes the very eccentric like plaque, right? And then I want to press a uh, uh, three millimeter here, stand. Right? Okay. So this is a diagonal wire, I'm Right? Yeah. No, that's the circumflex because uh, they didn't change the wires. The wires ah, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. This is a circumflex. Then uh, try to change. No. This way. Ah, yeah. Setting. Try to rotate a little bit. Right. From the uh, eight o'clock. Right. This way. Yeah. Then uh, this side is an uh, epicardial side. This is a Myocardial site, yes. Hmm. As you said, I, I, I'm not sure, yes, some disease at the orifice in this case, we are not sure the uh, pure orifice, right? Yeah. And, and what's the plan for that long dissection? Uh, are we going to stand the whole thing down? Uh, yeah, from, uh, right, from here, uh, the dissection start, right? Or I would still have uh, some, yes, dissection up to the uh, uh, dissected portion. Here you can see the, some space, right? Mm -hmm. And it's nice to, to show, for example, for the people who don't know much of CT, how you could see through that lumen and where. Yeah. yeah can you describe the he, plaque as well? Here is uh, the lumen, right? And uh, the, the other entity might be right, here. Mm. Okay. And you can identify uh, uh, media. Maybe from, from here. here. Mm. Right. Uh, no. And between more intima and media, we can identify the okay. space. Uh, more right. This is a dissection. From the uh, little bit distal portion, you can. I, I move the uh, cursor to the distal portion. We can identify the dissection here, start to the, the proximal site, like this. And then uh, this continue to the, the distal site. Right. Again, you can see the dissection. The, the opposite side here, right? Absolutely. All over. Yeah, all over. Here. Still, there's there's space here, here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can identify the calcium here, huge calcium from here to here, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I can ask uh, Dr. Akzak and the team their thoughts on. When you have still calcific stenosis, but the section present after a balloon, your thoughts on after <coughs> strategy? You so comfortable you with it later, or you go IVL nowadays? Yeah, thoughts on that pre it, it, it depends, but he, he succeeded to make a dissection here, so it, it is uh, yeah, dilated by a ballooning or a stenting because we have already the dissection, right? Huge dissection, right? Okay, but uh, if uh, yeah, the thickness of the calcium is more than 500 micron and uh, the uh, circular calcium, at that time we try to do the yeah, abrasion. But in this case, there are a mixed uh, plaque. You can identify the high signal in the intima, and here might be. I'm not sure that repeating is main, right? Now it's difficult to say because uh, very complex. I think to, yeah. to right. your to so your that, point, uh, you have, uh, um, that's part of the discussion around should you predilate or should you just atherectomize from the start. Uh, I Personally, as a, a reasonably heavy atherectomy user, I have no problems no, doing rotablation in a vessel that yeah, is yeah. that has got a dissection mm, in it. Right, but uh, um, uh, but you do have to be wise about how you do it. Yeah, here yeah, or you know, here you don't need it because I you've already need, got. I, I don't know. need because. Uh, the, Calcium, I mean, calcium is not uh, not actually it's, surface. It's not right? severe enough. Yeah, it's not surface calcium. Yeah. It's deep, and uh, you yes. don't have. I mean, here you have and a pretty here, good arc yeah, actually. Yeah, I, I agree. Here it's pretty good, but it's yeah, deep. But, but deep, right? And also the, some uh, distance from the, the guide wire to the, this position, yeah. rotabilator cannot touch yeah. this calcium. I think. Uh, here, here it's quite deep. Yeah, 
but the, the stand looks a little bit constrained there, oh. so I think um, you need to pause that. Yeah, al although, you know, with deeper calcium, right, mm -hmm. so this is where, I mean, we have a calcium toolbox, right? It's not about one yeah. device or another device. It's yeah, just yeah. about what the patient needs, right? So if you're going to use an atherectomy technology, oh. orbital atherectomy okay. can address this. More, uh, you know, uh, okay. uh, sh yeah. uh, shockwave lithotripsy okay. can address this if it's necessary, but you have a very short segment of calcium. 12, 14, and one place is 16, fixed, but 16. only makes up an arc on 180 18, on one side and about a quarter on the other side. So yeah. a balloon expanded that nicely. You don't right. need it. Right. You move on. Yeah. Yes, we, we have to just, uh, make an, uh, a scoring, right? Okay. Uh, if the Expanded. thickness is more than 500 okay. micron and the angle is more than... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the data show Shall that it's 0 0.443 oh, millimeters okay. of calcium. Mm -hmm. So 443 microns of calcium right. will respond well to a cutting or scoring balloon. Yeah. Very high pressures yes, are yes. 670 microns. Yeah. Below right. 670 microns, right. you're, you know, it's, it's sort of unclear whether it's cutter or whether it's high pressure. Beyond that, you're looking at atherectomy or, right. or shock right. OCT, please. I just have to make a comment here because when you have this kind of big dissections, the question is how you stent. And the risk is that you could have a good, two, two things could happen. Once you start stenting and your stent is close to the distal edge of that uh, dissection, is that the dissection propagates, especially uh, if it's a closed dissection. So um, the other thing we need to keep in mind here is that even if we put a stent that is well dilated, this could lead to a late malabsorption when the, uh, the blood that you have in the wall uh, coagulates and uh, becomes uh, less volumetric. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing to do a control on geography and eventually also uh, check for malabsorption in this kind of patients. So do you, actually this is a very good discussion. So Elvin, do you bring people back um, in CTO PCI okay. where you've stented yes. them? Okay. And Ready? their vessels have got large segments of intramural Ready? hematoma that you've stented over? Um, not so much for CTOs, and actually it's a good time, you never thought about this, but uh, mostly for uh, people where we have dissections that are visible with the eye as in the situation, or spontaneous dissections, I regularly bring them. And I even don't uh, put the stent with a very, very high atmosphere, especially not to squeeze the hematoma to prolong through the, uh, between the intima. Mm -hmm. So it's and interesting. Then, and then I will come and get them back and you regularly see that rosette sign, especially if you take them too late back. And you know what is rosette sign? is when there is endothelium already growing and the stent is malaposed. Yeah, that's not good. But and that's not good, but that's why in order to not destroy the endothelium, the best time to take them back is about three weeks. Because otherwise, with the new generation stents we have now, they re endotelize pretty fast. Okay, yeah, they, they do. There's RL, scanning electron microscopy RL, that shows, uh, yeah, even with resolutronic stents, right? You're getting endothelialization. Yeah. Uh, even with synergy stents, you're getting endothelialization. With yeah, I, I, I did the study for that, so <laughs> I can tell you exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the, the, we did a paper a couple of years ago that we called right coronary artery diverticula because there was this huge positive remodeling that seemed to happen around stents. How do you differentiate we canal really acquisition from to positive dilate. remodeling? Uh, the put wait a second, because the operator has main. a question for the imager. Okay. Uh, it's necessary. Okay, okay, yes. Uh, I, I try to explain. Here is in the distal edge, no, no dissection. Yes, mm -hmm. and the position is uh, some fibrous plug, but mm -hmm. stable position, that no problem at all, right? If it is uh, repeating, we have to think about the future edge is distinus, but okay, and expansion is good, right? Good, good. And this might be a little bit and the expansion, but the expansion index demonstrated 98%, mm. right? And some tissue protrusion, it's okay, and stand attached to the wall very well because we cannot identify any red color. This white bar demonstrate the good opposition, right? Dr. Akasaka, yes. help us understand that expansion index. It, it, to me, I'm struggling to make sense of it. Yeah. Well, as I look at this stent, it looks underexpanded in the midsection. Is it because the distal reference lumen is that pinch segment after the stent? Is that why the index is 98%? That's right, that's right. Therefore, I try to change the position a little bit proximal, right? As you said, right. 80% around, right? Is it okay? <laughs> this makes me feel better. I appreciate you doing right, that. Right, Thank right, you. Right. 77, right, okay. Yeah, it is important to identify the real proximal and distal, right?
Okay. So the proximal edge is okay, and also some calcium and fibrous plaque, and this is a very eccentric. Uh, if you dilate here much more, I'm afraid there's some damage in the, the opposite side. So that might be okay. You agree? Yeah. Still some disease so in the, the just distal to the mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, you've, you've landed in disease. In question the is uh, whether I have to dilate yes. the left main and the radiosteum. From angiographically, uh, I don't think so. It's not necessary. But OCT demonstrates mm. very narrow, just proximal mm. sites mm. here. Mm. How do you think? Yeah. We have to dilate? I, I do you think you need to put another yeah, yeah, stent? Yeah. And let, 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 let's check this for a second. Here might be some calcium. Protrusion calcium there, yeah. yeah. Yes, some calcium. Localized calcium. calcium. Right. Mm -hmm. This portion, the left main, is okay, right? That's but quite the, here, they just. Ah, right. And it, uh, that's on the contrast? Yeah, it's contrast. Right. So. Yeah. Hmm. so the protruding calcium in, in the, the distal left main. Just proximal yeah. stent. Just proximal. Just this the left main. Yeah. And there, uh, there is protruding calcium, but that in and of itself should not limit stent expansion because it's so focal. Yes, I agree. Right? Yes. That's well, the question that, is, that. should you stand for that or not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. And so, I, I mean, this is what this is the discussion we were having earlier, right? Which is, there there are good imaging cutoffs on IVUS to tell you you can defer, but there isn't a ton to tell you you should stent, right? <laughs> and <laughs> this is where perhaps a physiologic approach. <laughs> might give us some information. Okay, I do. <laughs> I do FFR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. FFR is going to come negative, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so uh, you let's, have let's, FFR. Let's, yeah. let's uh, discuss one mm. point. One point. I, 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 I need to come back to this physiological thing here because it's not only a question of physiology. You are in a proximal LED. You have a stent there. So who would be in favor of stenting this to left main and who would say leave it alone just on what we're seeing now without uh, without doing an FFR? Here is Dr. Patel. I, I think as a clinician, if I see both the images, I will treat it conservatively. And to, to make my case, I mean, I will endorse Dr. Saito's viewpoint to do FFR. In my practice, FFR has very, very limited indications and I think this is one of them when there is a confusion between OCT finding and angiographic picture and if you try to correlate clinically, these three I things don't correlate, then I think it's a good idea to do FFR. Otherwise, it looks to me like a very stable plaque in the left main. Yeah. So, uh, I, I realize I'm the one that brought up the physiology, right? And I. I I think in this situation, that's probably what I would do. But truthfully, if I decided on a procedure plan for this, having imaged it early and up front, which is, I think, where Dr. Katie was going earlier on in the discussion, having seen lipidic plaque with some calcification that was not expansion limiting at the proximal LAD, I probably would have planned the case as a crossover and gone left main right down from normal to normal because we know that that's sort of the the optimized result approach, right? We've got some disease at the very distal end of the stent here. It's also sort of f some fibrotic and some lipidic plaque. And so rather than take the, the risk of that, if I'm going to extend my stent two millimeters distally and just cross over into the left main and optimize the whole thing with a giant MSA, I wouldn't be all that worried about doing that. Yeah, uh, uh, we, we decide not only uh, uh, rumen uh, because we have to pay attention to the morphology. In Agreed. this case, uh, the proximal site actually a little bit uh, small size of the lumen, but uh, the, uh, the plaque is very eccentric, and the, we can identify that very thick calcium be behind uh, the, the, the region. So it, I, I'm afraid too much dilatation in the proximal site may make an assumption. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, think, I, I think I'm in to total agreement, Professor. I, the point I'm making is I, I would, introduce it. I don't think that calcium is stent expansion limiting, but I would not dilate this for the sake of dilating it unless I was prepared to stent it, which is why when I planned the case at the beginning, if I had imaged this early on before stenting, 
uh, I probably would have, and this is this goes to Dr. Katie's point, right? Yeah. Uh, had we imaged Tomorrow. at the beginning, I think I would have probably planned to stent from left main into LED in the first place. And then that would, we would not have been discussing the issue of should we dilate proximally or not? Is there a danger to doing that or not? Because right, right. The, uh, the answer is we would have stented already. Yeah, uh, so that is a very important point. Pre-procedure uh, morphology identification is very important to make a plan how to treat the region. And the, the beauty is now we have we actually have stent platforms that have the capability of expanding quite large, right? You have three O forty eight synergy stents, for example, that can go up to a four two five on label, four five off label, which can easily uh, take from the left brain all the way into it. the LAD. Uh, I fully uh, yes. agree. I, I fully agree. I think that history apart from only interventional cardiology, has told us that wars are lost based on not good planning. Exactly. So <laughs> it's such what we have made. to learn from the history. Such a good too. point made. This, it's an ounce of planning is worth time, efficiency, safety, everything. Yes. And at the same time, as I told you, the, some of the uh, interventionists who use an OCT, still they try to focus on the lumen profile, right? Yeah. We have to think about the, the real image at the same time. So longitudinal image with a short axis image mm -hmm. give us a lots of information about the morphology and we can get a uh, yes, decision how right. to treat. It's, it's this whole idea of luminal reserve, right? Which I think we'll, we'll hear a little bit about later, where how big is this vessel meant to be when it needs to be in its biggest confirmation? Once you remove vasomotor reactivity from the vessel by putting a stent in, it's suspended in that size. So you better suspend it in the biggest size it can be. And of course, FFR wires, these wires are not, I mean, they're getting better and better depending on whose wires you use, but they're not particularly good. Uh, My pick is here that the FFR things. will be negative. So mm -hmm. because it's a very short mm -hmm. and not so tight. And so, Let's see, but... but, uh, but the, the challenge is, Alvin, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but where you were going with your initial comment is, I think the FFR will be negative, but are you really comfortable leaving an osteal yes. LED that looks like that? Yes. yes. I, Especially I, when the circ that I, you I, have to cross is not so yeah, important. Yeah, okay. I'm, 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 totally, I'm totally in agreement there, right, in that it, it makes me uncomfortable. But this, uh, this but yet again goes back to the idea of when you image early, you, ha you get to avoid these difficulties. Equal rights. Can I ask one simple question? I apologize for the simplicity, but when you're okay. doing FFR with an osteal stenosis, is it okay to um, bring your guide out at the end, so normalize like it is now, then bring your guide out at the end, or should you always normalize in the aorta before starting? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think you, your point's well taken, right, in that you may be normalizing within a stenosis, uh, which is why my approach to these is that, I mean, we know once again the angiogram doesn't look at the left main very well, right? So I normalize all of these in the aorta. Now, in this situation that we are here, practically for the point yeah. I'm making <laughs> is that you just bring the FFR wire at the tip of your catheter, okay. you bring your cap, you push on the wire that you already have inside, bring your catheter outside, then you uh, equalize when your catheter is out, so you don't have to bring the FFR wire yeah, you, you outside just in the aorta. Sure the transducer just, uh, is, is outside the ostium, that's all. Yeah, yeah, but, but the tip of the guiding is outside the ostium. Yeah. Okay. So PDPA of 0.94, so very predictive of a negative FFR, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm not sure it depends on uh, the condition, right? The resting indices, uh, uh, yes, relate to the, the friction mainly. So uh, very discrete, tight lesion, FFR should be better than the resting indices. Agree. Right. Absolutely agree. So we give okay. That's a very good point taken, yeah. And you could see it here already, the resting indices are getting close to where it could eventually be positive, but I still think it'll be negative. But there was a pinching at the distal edge of yeah. the stent as yeah. well, right? <coughs> Is that what it's we negative, just negative the resting. Yeah, then the, cha the challenge becomes how far do you put the wire down now, right? Knowing that you have additional exactly. disease in the LED. <laughs> exactly. So you know, are, what, what I is you're measuring? Yeah, I did not see. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you stuff the wire into the apex of the LED, it doesn't matter how good it looks proximally, it's going to be positive. Sanjay, have you given adenosine? 
No boss, I'm just going. So are you using IV adenosine or intracoronary adenosine? Yeah, we are always using intracoronary. I want to know what is the dose for right and what is the dose for the left. Is it the dose which is described in the literature or you do something else? Hmm. Yes. 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 Yeah. The literature. The, the, the literature the literature the literature describes that you should give 100 mics in the right intracoronary and 200 mics in the left but it has never worked in our lab so our protocol is to give 300 mics in the right and 600 mics in the left sanjay what those you give 600 yes we, we just use iv adenosine in my lab Me we too. have 140 mics per kilo yeah. per minute and that's yeah. what we use for the yeah. for the right and the left that's a, yeah. simplifies things and avoids uh, that, any type of artifacts yeah that that is how it was described in the literature the challenge is that in places in jurisdictions outside of the united states adenosine is very expensive w when you use right? it comes uh, in it comes in very small bottles and so mixing an iv bag is a huge amount of money right if okay. you use an intracoronary injection uh, if you decide the final conclusion, it is important to add a little bit uh, higher dose, finally. One if, one if it is the same, yeah, the, that is the final conclusion. One of my partners and I are actually looking at this in a systematic fashion now, looking at IV in comparison to intracoronary and at what dose the receiver operating characteristics are to reflect an optimal, an optimal differentiation between hyperemia and lack thereof. But it's not an easy study to do. But this is right? uh, yeah, that correct. But it's here you have a little bit of a summation of lesions. You have yeah. the stent. Definitely. Definitely. You have mm -hmm. the distal to the stent. You have proximal to the stent. Then you have the the osteal uh, LAD. So yeah, I think I that uh, this is where pullback comes handy. But then many yeah. times I find yeah. that I and do the pullback and then you see a progressive. You don't see a, a you know a distinct step up. I mean, yeah. when you see the distinct yeah. step up, that makes things a lot easier. Okay. But many okay. Just, 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 just to return to the case because the operators are waiting. So, uh, okay, Doctor Sider, what is your plan? We have the FFR. You have the image. Uh, you have all information. Yes, uh, from based on the you know OCT finding and also the FFR finding, I I can you know stop. The procedure <laughs> finish. <laughs> it's enough for the patient. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic case. We we very much okay. appreciate.